Hi and welcome to another narration presented by yours truly, Cryptids Roost. Be sure to check out the blooper reel at the end of the video which is then followed by the end screen where you will find more videos listed. So grab your coffee, sit back and enjoy the show. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not. Soap Scum This awesome story is written by Mac Ralston. Mac Ralston now has a book available at Amazon. It is titled Cam Muffins, a horror anthology of just desserts. Be sure to check it out. The Amazon link is below in the description. 6, 17, 19, 45, 12, and 23. He finished. The last of the lotto numbers rolling off his tongue. Which was suspiciously dry considering the speckles of spit that now clung to the sneeze guard separating him and the attendant. He cleared his throat before wetting his whistle with a gulp of his unpurchased mega chug and wondered why the attendant didn't ask for his cash. That was supposed to be his cue. The attendant had seen this all too often. A straggler, one of the pesky pricks that moseyed on in five minutes before closing time making a last minute run for their munchies or whatever the hell they were going to blow their five dollar scratch off winnings on. It was so routine that he had to do a double take when the numbers all aligned. The ones coming out of the stranger's mouth and the ones sharpied onto that little strip of paper taped against the translucent wall just before the smile you're on camera sticker. What were the odds that they'd finally line up? Probably pretty slim. Yet sure enough, tonight they did. And let me do 20 on pump too, the impatient patron said, awaiting the clerk's response. Maybe a plea of his payment. None was given and instead of saying anything to the stranger in his station, the attendant silently trembled and reached just below the register. Shit. The barrels of two handguns met one another at the threshold of the see-through wall, still littered with the remnants of spittled lotto numbers and the smudges of oily fingers, which it held onto quite well but both of them knew it would never catch a bullet. There was a tense and somewhat awkward silence that seemed to drag on for a solid minute, only interrupted by the occasional passing car or noisy cricket. Is it bulletproof? The patron asked, breaking that silence once again. The attendant shook his head. Your gun's not cocked, he replied fumbling with his accent. What? Your gun. You didn't cock it, he said, the hammer on his sticking into place as he nervously grinned, like that. Now the silence was tenser, built up by the endless sound of buzzing fluorescent lights, as the patron gulped not on his mega chug, but on his own hot saliva, sweat accumulating under his palm. This wasn't supposed to happen. What is this? Self-defense? The attendant shook his head, popping open the register and shoving a five into his pocket. If I told you, he said, his once thick accent completely gone, you wouldn't believe me. I don't even believe me. Confusion smeared across the patron's face as he lowered his gun and took a step backward, ending the deadlock, defeated. Forget it man, he said, keep the damn money. 
You don't understand, the clerk said, scooting around the register, knocking bags of potato chips onto the unwashed floor. His sight locked onto the unpaying patron. I can't let you go. Another car passed as the attendant waited for a clearing. When he felt the road was empty, he nudged the former robber forward. A door chime reverberating in the cool nightly air as the duo waddled into the parking lot. The attendant scanned the lot and made eye contact with the stranger at his gunpoint. This yours on too, right? The man nodded. Throw me your keys. And the gun. After an apprehensive hesitation, the stranger agreed, handing over the aforesaid items. What's this all about? He asked. Get in the car, the attendant said. Passenger side, and if you try to run, I will shoot you. The man sighed in self-pity pleading for an ounce of mercy. Look man, I didn't even take the money. This has nothing to do with the money. All you did was make this easier for me. Now get in. Without further protest, the man marched over to the passenger side of his car, sitting atop a pile of crumbs, ash and unpaid parking tickets. He waited in there for many long moments, contemplating making a run for it, until the attendant emerged from the darkness, carrying a rope made of metal twine, which choked out any dreams of escape. Lean forward so I can tie this around you. Why? Because if you don't, I'll kill you, the attendant said, waving the cocked gun in his hand. The stranger distrustfully agreed, leaning forward and allowing himself to be tied up. When the attendant was done with the dirty work, he slammed the door and walked around the hood to the driver's side, surveying the empty road and plopping himself in the stranger's vehicle. With the turn of the key, the engine roared. Look, if you're going to kill me, just do it. The tied up man said. His head hung against his chest as he fidgeted with the corded wire snugly strapped across him. The attendant finally sighed. What are the odds that you'd pick the exact numbers? He asked. A faint and ironic chuckle on his lips. <laughs> what are you talking about? It doesn't matter, the attendant said, shaking his head and letting his foot off the brake as the car rolled into motion. His passenger's heart sunk into his stomach as they looped around to the back of the building, wondering if the crazed gas station clerk was actually something of an axe murderer, ready to hack him into chop suey as soon as they faded from the fluorescent limelight. As they pulled up before the car wash at the rear of the station, the clerk pressed firmly onto the brakes, forcing the vehicle to a halt before shifting into neutral atop the metal tracks. He let out one last sigh as he stared ahead, the beams from the car's headlights shining onto a sign draped from a chain rope that blocked off the dark void of the wash's entrance. Reading simply, out of service. Thank you. The clerk said. The hell do you even mean? The tied up passenger replied, more confused than frightened at this point. The attendant simply chuckled under his breath once again, <laughs> wagging his head as he pushed open the driver's side door, light filling the car from above. I thought they were crazy too, the people that found it, but now I know as you soon will, that they were right, and if we don't do this, God knows what this thing will do in its hunger. What? was all the passenger could say, high pitched and squeaky like. 
but he was too late to protest. The clerk approaching the wash yanked the chain from its anchor on one side and tread carefully to the other. He rested the sign and its chain on the soaked concrete as he staggered over to a small metal kiosk machine, slipping the fife from his pocket into it. The car wash whirred into motion as a low growl-like sound rumbled the ground. Thank God it doesn't hunger often. Within seconds, the car and its estranged passenger were already halfway tugged into the gaping chasm that frothed and gnashed with sputtering spinning brushes that flailed all too organically, and the bubbling liquid that secreted from every orifice of the machine rained down onto the car with a sizzling shimmer, shattering the glass windshield on impact and eating straight through the metal roof burning into the seats and the seated passenger. The brushes clasped onto the tied up man just as he began to scream, only for the entire commotion to be drowned out by the sound of echoed music that played from the station's speaker system, coordinated by the clerk who feared a passerby might have heard the cries for help. They didn't of course, and even if they did, the screams were short-lived. Soon, the wash had finished cleaning its plate, sloshing chunks of flesh through its bristles like a baleen whale. What remained of the car found its way to the other side, still dripping with the strange substances that resembled ordinary industrial soaps and waxes, but were clearly anything but. It didn't take long to clean them, however, and they, along with the pools of blood that formed beside them, swiftly spiralled down the gutter drains, out of sight, out of mind. The final touch was actual soap and actual bleach, and after it soaked up the foul smells, the only thing to remain was the soap scum that had accumulated on the concrete and as he cleaned and closed up in the small hours of the morning, making sure to carefully reapply the chained up sign to the defunct wash, the so-called attendant sharpied a curved black line onto that number 23, a 28 in its place, hoping that the next poor soul would never consider it to be their lucky number. Uh, the weary traveller said. And let's do fifteen. Thank God, the clerk thought, glancing from the sharpie twenty-eight to the man. He was a tired-looking, somewhat husky guy who must have been in his early thirties. Best of luck. Uh, I'm usually not so lucky, the man shrugged with a sniffle. <laughs> taking the lotto ticket and shoving it into his jacket. You have no idea, the attendant thought. The man chuckled to himself from across the counter. <laughs> My mama always thought this kind of stuff was a waste of money. I told her it's a game, you know, like cards or whatever. Yeah, the attendant said, yawning. It was four hours into his night shift and he hadn't gotten his break. To be fair, he never got his break. Yeah, God rest his soul though, the man said with a sigh. Say, you got a bathroom around here? Without hesitation, the attendant lifted the key, dangling from a license plate, and handed the unusual pairing over to the man who accepted it hesitantly. All the way down on the left, the clerk said, pointing. Thanks. The man strode down the aisle of gummy bears and cheese puffs, clutching the dirty license plate that was suspiciously damp, until he reached the door with the little picture of the stick figure about to wet itself. 
he pushed the key into the handle, twisted it and walked in. The stench hit him like a sack of potato chips, but it wasn't anything he hadn't smelled before. He passed the toilet which seemed to have been left unflushed since the mid 90s and approached the urinal attached to the wall with one of those pink patties in the centre. He unzipped and began to piss, lifted his hand still clutching the license plate leaning on it with his elbow against the wall and as he was pissing he turned and studied the thing worn and wet as it was and because it was sideways he had to kind of bend his neck to get a good read of the thing we've fun is what it said it was an ohio plate a pretty beat up one at that with holes that littered and rusted metal and left no trace of paint around them. It was ugly and yet it seemed so familiar. Where had he seen it before? Where'd you get this? The man asked, setting the plate onto the countertop across from the clerk. The clerk settled his eyes on it and swallowed, trying not to show any emotion at the sight of the thing. Ohio. The clerk grinned. The man wasn't laughing. I don't know. Probably found it on the street. He lied. On the street? Yeah, you know, they fall off all the time. The man, smelling the shit from a mile away, or at least from the bathroom, lifted the plate, took another good glance at it, and then dropped it back to the counter. It was my neighbours. We fun. I saw that shit every day I pulled out of the drive. But not for the last week or so. He went missing. The clerk swallowed. He knew the man could see right through him. Why the hell did he have to hold on to that stupid plate? It wasn't even that funny. He should have let the lake have it. I, uh, I hated that son of a bitch. He was such a douchebag. He stole my bike from my garage. Like, who the hell does that? The clerk shrugged, in a daze and unsure of what to say or do. He did still have the gun, and they told him if anyone should find out, well, they shouldn't. He was the kind of sick bastard that'd kill animals and stuff. For fun. Real sadistic. The clerk nodded. He tried to rob me. The man didn't know what to say. And neither did the attendant. Is he... dead? The husky man finally asked. The clerk, looking out the glass door to the empty road outside, scooted up and around his tiny little office, brushing by the rack of potato chips. He gestured for the man to follow him, and without a word, the man followed. At first, he thought it was a joke, but as the clerk explained it so nonchalantly, the more the man wanted to believe him. It wasn't until a squirrel, or a chipmunk, or whatever the hell it was, dashed past two strangers and ran into the thing before he realised that what the clerk had been telling him was true. Because that squirrel or chipmunk or whatever had only just run into the thing but for a split second before the clerk slipped a five into the machine. And then what followed was the sound of the little thing squeaking, its bones cracking and the sputter of the wash swallowing it down. They both stood in silence for a long moment after that. So how'd you find it? The husky man asked, unable to take his eyes off the now motionless wash. I didn't, the clerk said. The vocal facade completely dropped. I was hired by some government pricks to watch it. 
whatever the hell it is. Well, what is it? The clerk shrugged. I don't know, but they told me they'd kill me if I told anyone, and that I was supposed to kill anybody that found out. The husky man turned to face the clerk, a horrified expression plastered on his face, only more realised when he noticed the gun strapped to the attendant's hip. Nah, I'm not gonna kill you. The man sighed. But they still might. The husky man nodded. He scanned the large car wash, or whatever the hell it was, and scratched his chin. What do they do with it? The clerk shrugged again. Hell if I know. Every now and again they come around and mess with it. I'm supposed to watch it. Feed it. The lotto number thing? The man asked. The clerk nodded. And no one else has ever found out. No police. The clerk shook his head. Nope. The man bit his lip. And it doesn't leave any trace of nothing? No bones? Not that I'm aware of, the clerk yawned. The man chewed over the whole bizarre scenario in his head a couple of times, thinking about his ex-neighbour. He really did have it coming, the man said. He was a scummy guy. I heard him hollering to his girlfriend night after night. Poor girl. Her face was all sorts of colours. Hmm, the clerk said. Guess sometimes things work out. The man nodded. You did a public service as far as I'm concerned. Hell. He stopped midway through his sentence. The clerk looked over. What? Well, the man faltered. I mean, have you ever thought of choosing people to go into that thing? The clerk chewed on his question. You mean like, not randomly? Yeah. No, I couldn't choose. I could, the man said. I mean, think about it. Your whole lotto system might mean that some good folks gotta die too. But if you choose them right, you could essentially clean up this town. The clerk laughed in his throat. <laughs> I just run the station, buddy. Okay, I'm not a hero. I just happen to get lucky. And the man chewed over what the clerk had said. Two days later, and five miles down the same stretch of road at a similar looking station, that same man, the same tired, husky looking guy, had found himself crouched in the back of a Chevy POS, rag in one hand, bottle in the other. Meanwhile, the door chime, busted as usual, didn't alert the cashier that anyone was inside the station. The place itself been a lot smaller than the joint down the street, and far more run down. It wasn't until the late night customer had passed the security camera, which he had smugly winked into as he chewed his unpurchased bubblegum, that the cashier noticed he wasn't alone, and sat up accordingly. The sketchy as all hell customer was cradling a bag of potato chips, can of beer, packet of beef jerky, and the already opened sleeve of bubblegum in his arms. He looked aptly fit to be the kind of guy there at 11 o'clock, and something told the cashier he wasn't there merely for a pile of snacks. How's it going? The customer chewed dropping the collection of junk food to the countertop from across the cashier. He flashed a smile and the cashier began reaching for the price scanner. Hey, you ever watch the price is right? The customer asked, his wad of gum still smacking against his cheeks. The cashier shook his head. 
his English not being the best. They played this game where they gotta guess a price, and if they goes too high, the little guy falls off the cliff. The cashier smiled and nodded, pulling the little scanner from its holster on the counter, aside from the register. You wanna play? The customer grinned. The cashier shook his head, but by the time he finished, the man had snatched the scanner from his hand, leaving him tremble. It's gonna be fun, trust me. Here's how you play, he said, waving the little scanner around as he spoke. You gotta tell me how much this, this, this and that is, he said, pointing to his four items. But here's the catch. If you go over, he smiled, lifting the little scanner to the cashier's head and pulling the tiny trigger, his forehead now glowing red. Boop! The customer squeaked. I don't want to play, cashier said. I didn't say you had a choice. Now come on, tell me, how much? The cashier glanced down at the four items. The unwrapped gum, the chips, the jerky and the beer, sweating onto the counter. He was too. He knew the gum was 50 cents and the chips were a dollar. Was the jerky two for five again, or did that end last week? I don't got all day, buddy, the customer said, though he was certainly no customer by this point. Seven ninety-nine, the cashier said, not an ounce of confidence in his voice. Hmm, you a mathematician? Let's see if you're right, the unpaying customer said as he lifted the gum and pulled the tiny trigger. Bleep! 50 cents. The man smiled and aimed at the bag of chips, the barcode turning a blood red colour. Bleep! One dollar. The jerky was next. The scanner got awfully close this time as he looked deeply into the cashier's eyes as the quiet bleep filled the entire store. Bleep! 2.50 and last but certainly not least, the beer, covered in dripping sweat from the condensation on the bottle. The cashier too was wet and dripping. Bleep! 3 .99. The total was right. 7 .99. Well, shit my pants, the unpaid customer said with a smile cracked into his cheeks, looking to the cashier. What are the freaking odds of that? The cashier sighed. Only one problem. The man grinned wider, pulling a beretta from his waistline and cocking it. You forgot the tax. The husky man, still pinched in the back seat of the Chevy, heard the shots. There were three, followed by a long silence. And after the silence had ended, the door chime which must have started working again, beeped the unpaid customer farewell as he jogged to his car across the rain speckled lot, popped open the unlocked door and slid inside. He cracked open the lukewarm beer and took a gulp, pushing his key into the ignition, but as he did, the husky man from behind him wrapped his arms around his neck, shoved the soaked cloth into his face pulled back on both sides, and pulled, and pulled, and eventually the man stopped resisting. It was 11.59, nearly one minute before closing, when the sound of the squeaking door and the haunting sound of its chime reverberated throughout the desolate station five miles down the road and the clerk moaned to himself in his fake accent and rolled his eyes because of it. Sorry, we are close. He was about to finish, but choked on his own words when he watched the husky man, a mere stranger to him really, drop a fully grown man bound in duct tape to the floor that he had just washed with Fabuloso. What the hell are you doing? He spat. The husky man 
looking up from the body, squirming around on the floor, screaming into the tape over his mouth, seemed surprised at the clerk's response. Well, you remember the conversation we had the other night, right? The clerk stammered. Y yeah? Well, I thought about it, and you were right. You got lucky. But how often does that happen? The door chime interrupted the clerk's answer, and he turned to see who it was. Force of habit nearly caused him to start up the whole sorry we are close thing again. But before he could speak, he choked back on his words at the sight of two men, dressed in black suits, standing at the doorway. The husky man had turned to face them too, as did the taped up man who was looking up at them from the floor. It was the second stroke of the old force of habit that prompted all three parties to throw up their guns. The two black suited men with matte black government issued handguns, the clerk with his pistol and the husky man with his tied up hostages Beretta. It felt like deja vu. The clerk had found himself in another standoff and this time he had not one but two guns pointed at his head. Actually it was one again. The husky man couldn't make up his mind. The hell's going on? One of the black suited men said. His voice was cold like he had seen far screwier situations and his gun was focused on the clerk. Are these the government guys? The husky man asked, twisting his head over his shoulder, gun still aimed at the two men. He knows? The other suited man snapped, his gun trained on the husky stranger. Both of the black suited men were now eyeing the clerk through their jet black shades. I... the clerk stammered. He didn't know what to say. If he told them that he had told, they would have surely pumped his face full of lead. But if he denied it, the husky man with the loose lips would have surely squealed and then they would have popped him for lying to their faces. Something was about to come out of his mouth, but then someone walked through the door. The little chime beeped and the two black suited men separated in confusion to allow the stranger to enter the station. He was a dumpy man, middle aged and half awake. Of course, when he saw the guns, he woke right up. Who the hell is this? One of the black suited men asked. The clerk and the husky man glanced over at one another and shrugged. I um the dumpy man began. Just need ten dollars on pump one. The station got really quiet. The guns were still crisscrossed in every direction, yet no one made a move. Not even a sound. Then the taped up man grumbled underneath his taped up mouth, and the husky man kicked him, and the clack twitched. I, I can come back, the dumpy man said. No, it's fine, the clerk said and began walking behind the counter. The dumpy man, lifting his eyes from the duct taped gentleman writhing around on the ground, slowly approached the counter and stretched out his twenty. What the hell's going on here? The dumpy man said under his breath, leaning over the counter. The cash register chimed and the clerk handed over his change, a less than crisp ten dollar bill. Can you make that two fives? He asked. I gotta use the wash. It's broken, the clerk said. Actually, one of the black suited men spoke up. We were just about to fix it. The dumpy man's eyes darted back and forth between his own reflections in the dark shady glasses of the men in black. Then finally, one of them spoke. Get your ass out of here and don't come back, he said firmly. The dumpy man, without another word, scurried from the station and into the night. 
leaving the clerk, husky man and his hostage alone with the two black suited men. Let's go outside, one of the men said through the cold gaze of his shades, never once lowering his handgun, which against the starless sky through the glass door almost matched the sheer pitch blackness of the night, if not that is for the noticeably greasy fingerprint smudges that the clerk hadn't cleaned with Windex yet. When the entire group had migrated outside, the two men in the black suits gestured with their handguns for the three strangers to keep shuffling forward, right towards the back of the station, where the car wash was. Look, I didn't tell him a damn thing, alright? A friggin' squirrel ran into it. He saw the whole damn thing. Who did? One of the black suited men snapped. The clerk pointed over at the husky man. Then who the hell's that? The man in black's cold voice probed, pointing now to the duct tape man. Some of the tape and hair removed from his legs so that he could walk. He's scum, the husky man said as he shuffled alongside his hostage his voice gruff and attempting to be intimidating. It wasn't, especially not looking down the barrels of two guns. Get in, the other man in black said. His voice, on the other hand, was intimidating, especially when accompanied by the black handgun pointed in their faces. The clerk and the husky man looked over their shoulders and gulped deeply at the sight of the wash and the man bound in duct tape was confused as all hell as to why. Just shoot me then, the clerk said, turning back to face the government pricks. I don't... <laughs> the handgun in the black suited man's hand shot a hole straight through the clerk's face. His body fell to the ground as the men in black watched, and then he pivoted the gun to face the husky man whose face was pale and sweaty. What's it gonna be? The man in black asked, his voice void of rattle. The husky man, rattling and trembling, turned again to face the wash and then back to the two men. He thought of the squirrel or the chipmunk or whatever the hell it was and then watched his reflection defeatedly nod in the sunglass lenses. The man bound in tape watched as the husky man's body hit the pavement. The other man in black leaned forward and ripped the black tape from his mouth, pulling along some peach fuzz with it. He moaned. You want a bullet or a wash? The man in black asked. He wouldn't ask a second time. The previously taped up man, who now had permission and the freedom to speak, began laughing. <laughs> Go in a car wash or get shot in the face, he reiterated. The men in black nodded. He laughed again. His answer was clear. And it was a decision that seemed all too obvious. That was until about three steps into the wash after one of the men in black had slipped a five into it. It began spinning and whizzing and frothing. He thought nothing of it at first, but once the brushes and scrubbers began stretching out towards him like tendrils, did the terror wash over him, which happened to coincide with the foaming liquids that began to ooze from every crevice of the place right onto his skin. It bubbled and burned as he screamed. <coughs> but his cries only lasted but a second before the man was reduced to nothing but piles of human hamburger helper at the bottom of the wash, which soon found their way down the drains, or whatever the hell they were to the thing. The two men in black stood silently outside before one of them lifted a calm finger to his ear and pressed it firmly into the hidden earpiece that he had been wearing the entire time. Targets neutralized and subject nourished, he said. But no sooner did he say that before a bullet shot through his head. 
and the head of his colleague beside him. And then, from the shadows, the dumpy stranger emerged, gun in hand and finger in ear. Both targets neutralized, he said, walking up to the bodies. And sir, you're never going to believe this. You remember that prick that escaped from Bronson County last month? Yeah. The voice over the earpiece said. The Drew Carey, SOB? Yeah, well, he was here, sir, wrapped in duct tape or some shit. I think the wash got him. What are the odds of that happening? The voice said. I don't know, but there's one less dirt bag we gotta knock off the list. The voice said. How come the MIB didn't think of using this thing as a human trash compactor, huh? He asked, lifting the dead man in black's limp arm with the top of his gym shoe. Hey? The voice groaned. They're all about conservation. They're glorified tree huggers. They don't give a shit about the public. And we do. The voice chuckled. <laughs> The dumpy man bit his lip and agreed. So, uh, what do you want me to do about the bodies? He asked plainly. Just clean them up. And I hope you enjoyed the blooper reel. And wondered why the intent... And wondered why the attendant didn't ask for his the patron asked breaking the silence confusion smeared when he felt the road was empty he waited in there ready to hack into him within seconds the car and its estranged passenger were already halfway tugged into the gaping chasm that thrust coordinated by the clerk who feared a passerby beeped the unpaid customer farewell as he jogged dropped a fully grown man bound in duct tape to the floor that he had just washed with when the entire group had migrated outside the two men in the black suits gestured to their <coughs> fuck's sake he laughed his Look, we gotta get enough political prisoners to get through it. Hey family, please be so kind as to throw punch the like button and smack the ass of the subscription button as well. And remember to choke hold that notification bell and then select all. That way you'll receive all notifications each time I upload a new video. And by subscribing, you'll be the first to see all of our new spooky creepypasta stories. A very big thank you to Mac Ralston for allowing me to narrate this awesome story. And make sure to check out their creepypasta fandom page for more brilliant stories. Also be sure to check out their book, Cam Muffins, available at Amazon. And why not? Hashtag Cryptids Roost in your comments. A quick thank you to all of my Cryptids Roost community family too. 
we are now well on our journey to 1000 subscribers. If you would like to support us and throw me a dollar or three, I'd be very much appreciative. I do have PayPal, paypal.me slash cryptidsroost. Alternatively, I have an account at buymeacoffee.com. You don't even need to register on either site to donate. I have a subreddit if you have a story you've written that you would like me to narrate for you. You can also follow us. All my socials are contained within the link tree link below. And don't forget to check out the end screen. See above. That will also list some more videos in my back catalogue. All the links are below. Take care everyone and I hope you all have a wonderful and peaceful night. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is 